so like the buoys and stuff i would love for us to just transport them directly to 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 to, to Southwest, the bird key now what it's coming finally we're demarcating our fish sanctuary out here on the southwest key pedro bank and uh, it looks good i mean it's the first time we're really setting eyes on the buoys stickers are on so you know the nature conservancy government of jamaica no fishing all of these things the reflective tape it, it just looks so beautiful i really make this effort to come to the keys after 15 years haven't touched the key and you know this is what brings me back here it says a lot because the sanctuary means a lot to me and this is when I said to someone that fish sanctuary is a big hoax for fishing in Jamaica. Three quarters the size of Jamaica, the Pedro Bank lies about 90 miles southwest of Kingston, a submerged marine plateau. It is Jamaica's most productive fishery, supplying all of the island's lucrative conch exports. For decades, the center of the fishing industry, with annual economic activity valued at over 20 million US dollars, Pedro is of utmost importance, with many a fisher bringing home much needed income to fishing communities spread across Jamaica's south coast. I'm Rocky Pine, Wollaba Bay, White House, West Palm, and Kingston, Jamaica. All of us are a food ground. And, and uh, we're glad for it. I must say it grew me into a full man, Pedro Key, Pedro Bank, because you know it, 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 it was a lot of people that I work around that inspire me. You know, and was so much into their fishing and believed in what they do and had pride in what they do and I've been inspired from a lot of those guys. Jamaica's very first offshore fish sanctuary is located in a two-kilometer radius around Southwest Key, also known as Bird Key. It is of high ecological and economic value and was selected using fishing knowledge and scientific data. Absolutely no fishing or harvesting is allowed in the protected area. This sanctuary will be the first in a planned network of protected areas across Pedra Bank. The purpose of the sanctuary is to secure the future of the fishing community out here. More lobster, more conch, more fish. And to also preserve the beautiful resources that are out here. The coral reefs, the many, many different seabirds, thousands of birds literally, you know, nesting on the keys. Sea turtles, we want to protect all of the resources. Fishing was great, beautiful. You will haul traps like 200 pounds of fish, 300, and a beautiful fish. All different species you would see in each trap. But as the years pass, you can see that's deteriorating, deteriorating because of the fishing habits that we, the fishermen, started to do here. Yeah? I have two sons. One is here with me in Jamaica, one is in England. I'm not saying that the, that the one is here will be a fisherman. But I'm sure right now, if he decide when he left school, if he decide to come into the fishing business, there's a lot of fish that I know of myself. He won't know them if, if it continues like this. The bank is overfish. Nature Conservancy is helping us to make a livelihood because we can fish here today and get, kill all we want, right? Next year we won't have any. So where we are going to do? We are going to go to Cuba. We can go to Belize. 
Right? We can go Honduras. Where we are going to do? All we have to do is protect our little much no, from no. None of us who are here cannot say that they don't see that the fishing in population is getting lower and, and lower. lower. Right? Every day that I It can. is a fact. Everybody wants to see the country come back. Because I'm a Jamaican. I'm an American, I'm a Cayman, and I'm a Jamaican. And what get Jamaica good, me is with it. The Nature Conservancy has been working closely with Pedro Bank communities to make sure that they're able to voice their knowledge and opinions, as well as receive important information about fisheries and wildlife conservation. Let's put our heart together, because I said again, <coughs> Pedro Key have so much to offer. No matter what you hear they talk about around Jamaica, the fishing village around Jamaica. True. There's none you can compare like a PJP. It's a gold mine. Yeah, I believe it's, it's a gold, gold mine. mine. Definitely. And you can't match it. And we have to do something to save that. Until we accomplish a fish sanctuary at PJP, then we can raise many, many flags and say we have accomplished something. The Southwest Key Fish Sanctuary is being protected, patrolled, and managed by members of the Pedro community who have received training for their new roles. Active participation is necessary for the sanctuary to be successful, and the Pedro community has shown its commitment in a wide number of ways, including the difficult task of building and deploying the buoys that now mark the boundaries of the sanctuary. The importance of a fish sanctuary at the Pedro Banks, which is our main fishing area. It's the largest fishing area that we have in Jamaica, and a lot of people utilize that area. Several surveys have been done that shows that, yes, out there the fish stock is in a very bad state. Well, the main purpose of the fish sanctuary is to ensure that there will be something there for the future. It's literally going to be a bank. You're going to be investing in it. And that investment is simply leaving it alone leaving a nursery, leaving a reef, leaving a sea, some seagrass beds where the fish will just be allowed to reproduce, get big, move out to other areas of the, of the Pedro Keys where the fishermen will be able to catch them. Being a warden, we make sure so nobody you know, fishing in that if no take zone and catches undersized fish. I catch it buried lobsters in which we call the egg lobster out here. In which you see a whole a lot of data go on right now. Even on my boat, I tell my my partner said no, no egg lobster. You know, we can't allow that. The important thing is for is for those that come to mature size to breed without human disturbance. So we advise folks, even outside of a sanctuary area, and you catch a fish that is impregnated throw it back overboard so that she can go and breed. We advise folks, allow the sanctuaries to do naturally what sanctuaries do, provide shelter, provide an, a, a safe environment so that the natural things that fish do to grow and develop can take place. The fish sanctuary is a, is a wise idea because we know say, from now to maybe three or four years you will see you will see the improvement. I see myself probably in the next 10, 15 years, probably seeing the key come back to what it was before, before it, it reached to this stage. A one pound lobster produces 8,000 eggs, of which about eight will grow to be adults. In comparison, a nine pound lobster produces 100,000 eggs, of which about 100 will survive to maturity. That is over 10 times as many lobsters. The bigger the lobster, fish, or conch, the more offspring they produce, and their population will grow larger. So it makes sense to keep investing in our bank, allow fish, lobster, and conch to grow to maturity so that they can reproduce, and obey the rules of the sanctuary so the marine life will have a chance to grow and spread to areas outside. Then you will start to see the economic benefits because you will get high prices for larger catch. The bigger fishes you catch is the better money for you because what the smaller fishes can sell for, the bigger fishes is the more money for that. 
The small fishes may sell for 150 or 200, which the bigger fishes will get 350. In addition to sheltering marine life, an important role of fish sanctuaries is to protect the surrounding environments and habitat because fish need a healthy home to grow and flourish. So keep solid waste and pollution out of the ocean. Do not break corals or damage the reef. And make sure that those that keep the reefs free from smothering algae remain in large numbers. If we don't protect our reefs by allowing the reef cleaners to do their thing, which is the parrots and the old wife, and to some extent the sea urchins, because we get to understand that people are harvesting sea urchins now for a market, then we will no longer have healthy reefs. So allow the reef cleaners to stay on the reef so that we can have healthy reefs. The fish that we are selling now, like the doctor fish and the old wife and the angel fish, they were not sold, but now they have to be sold because the target fish is no longer available because of bad fishing practices, because people don't want to allow the fish to go to their mature state. I've been given the role and the responsibility to manage the fish sanctuary that has been recently declared by the government. So I'll be responsible for ensuring that the area is patrolled, the wardens carry out their duties. There are a few people who feel like it never happen because you attack them from fishing in a god sea and mass a god fish can't do none. My main concern with enforcement is that they're going to be gentlemen out there who just won't want to adhere to the rules. They'll just simply be breakers, they just simply just want to encroach and come in. One person coming in might not seem that much, but over time, if one man gets away with it and he comes back, he tells his friend, you know, listen, the fish over there on and, and Bird Key, they're huge, you know. That's going to be my concern when they actually see the benefits and they're probably going to want to come in and start, you know, the old habits again. One of the missions of the JDF Coast Guard is maritime law enforcement, which is very wide. But under maritime law enforcement, aside from the trafficking of illicit substances, there is the issue of fisheries protection. I have seen where the industry has declined over the years. If the sanctuary can change that, can improve that for the better, from my organization's standpoint, we stand ready to support it. Persons are going to fish in the sanctuary without somebody there to pull them away or to see that they don't fish, then there is really is no reason why they're not going to fish there. So the enforcement, I think, is very important. It's the, the pivot point of the sanctuary being a successful one. And if you don't have enforcement, then, you know, we're really wasting our time. And the JDF Coast Guard stands ready to, to patrol the sanctuaries. We stand ready to enforce the no fishing directives given in the sanctuary. I also want to mention that for those who are intent on going down to Southwest Key or Bird Key, that be very mindful that you don't interfere with the birds, the turtles, and their eggs. Because once you do, again, we will certainly take you to task and ensure that the full length and breadth of the law is, is, is against you. Belize is one of the Caribbean's leaders in protecting fisheries. Once threatened by overfishing, Belize created networks of large fish sanctuaries which have successfully revitalized their marine resources. After four years, Hal Chan Marine Reserve had 15 times more lobster and eight times more conch than fished areas. The Nature Conservancy has partnered with Bread's Treasure Beach Foundation to help administer the Galleon Fish Sanctuary that stretches from Black River to Galleon Beach on the south coast of Jamaica. You know this is a marketplace now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is everything good? Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No more fish. Yes, sir. After just a year of enforcement, the Galleon community has noticed marked improvements both inside and outside the sanctuary. Today marks the first anniversary of the Gallon Fish Sanctuary. Hopefully we have many more of this and also many more successful ones to follow year and year to come. Okay, this is building towards a lifetime success for the community. See about over there, Tristan, they seem like they're pulling up net or something. They're doing something over there. Take a look. Okay, let me have a look. You need to patrol on a daily basis. Night and day, you need to patrol because the time when you don't patrol, that's when somebody's going to come in. Well, we expect the sanctuary to perform 
a little bit better than before. Well, it is. We have seen more fishes around right now. And even manatee, more turquoise, and better catch outside, of the, outside the center. With the center right now, I see enough changes, enough young, young baby fish. So I see a big change in it. It's been a great thing to really know as a fisherman and really working as a water also, you know, to really know that I'm doing something good that is very positive for the younger youth. But if you see, if they come up and down there and you see like a little light or something up here and they call anyway. And sure you say somebody up there so, so go on up there. Because it's a good protection for the whole away. The whole of the fish are folks down here. That's why they do it. If we want to continue enjoying to eat these fishing resources, then these fish sanctuaries are a must because if we continue to consume these resources the way we have been consuming without protecting them and, and allowing them to repopulate and regenerate, we'd have nothing to eat left. So if you like eating it, you need to support these fish sanctuaries to, to continue just to eat it. If we have sanctuaries on the inshore and sanctuaries on the offshore, so we have fish developing, growing and breeding on the offshore area and we have fish developing and breeding on the inshore area and then they move from those selected no-take areas into the general fishing grounds. You can imagine the impact. You can just imagine that the pressure will be released on one particular area. The Southwest Key Fish Sanctuary and the fish sanctuaries that are dotted around Jamaica's inshore coastal waters are all part of an effort to preserve our essential natural resources. The Jamaican government, as part of the Caribbean Challenge, has pledged to protect 20% of our marine and coastal habitats by 2020. The Nature Conservancy, by partnering with the Jamaican government to increase marine protected areas, is helping Jamaica meet our preservation goals. Protecting Pedro is something we can all invest in.